Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this double spiral macrame bracelet and it has this really cool effect especially if you use two colours of cord where it looks like it's a double spiral running all the way along but they kind of blend it together at the same time now I do just want to mention if you're new to macrame and you're interested in learning more I do have a macrame starter kit that I sell in my shop you'll be able to find that below the video and I do also have loads more tutorials on my channel so feel free to check that out otherwise if you want to learn how to make this bracelet then keep watching. So these are the materials that we'll need. Now I'm using a 1.5 millimeter leather cord and I have one in a purple color and then one in a copper color. Of course you can mix and match yours however you want to and even use a different kind and thickness of cord to achieve different results. Now I'm gonna make a button and loop closure to finish off the ends of this bracelet and for that I'm using this shank button here that has a loop on one side and a nice design on the other and that will be the button part of the clasp. Now to help finish off the ends of the cord, I'm also going to use this E6000. Now to help make a macrame, I'm going to be using this mini macrame board that has these notches all the way around the edges, so it's going to make it nice and easy to make a macrame with. And of course we're also going to need a pair of scissors so we can actually cut our cord. So you'll be able to find the material list and useful links in the description box down below. But otherwise, let's get all the materials ready and let's get started. So we need to cut some lengths of our cord and I have a length here of about 70 centimeters and you can just choose whichever color you want this to be. This will be the holding cord. And then we need two lengths of about one meter and 60 centimeters each. These will be our working cords and you just want one of each color. So the first thing we need to do is create our loop for the closure. So I'm gonna grab the two cords that are the same color. One is the holding cord and one is the working cord. And then what we wanna do first of all is just find the midpoint of both of them. So just put the end together. And then where you keep hold of it in the middle here is where we just want to grab it and then just do the same with the other length. So that is the working cord. Bring the two ends together and then just keep hold of roughly where the middle is. Then what we need to do is attach this working cord to the holding cord. And I'm just going to create a little loop here where the midpoint is and then put the working cord behind this loop. And we now end up actually having two lengths of holding cords here coming down from the loop. Now what we need to do is attach this together. So I'm going to do that simply by making a knot. So I'm going to take the left length of the working cord, bring it over the holding cords there. And I'm just doing this freehand for now. And then take the right length and bring over the one from the other side there that we brought over from the left. Go underneath everything in the middle and come up on the other side and make sure you also come through the loop so it looks a little something like that. And then just pull it all the way through and basically tighten the knot. And then just make sure we tighten it nice and tight there. So we now have our loop in place and it's not gonna go anywhere. And as you can see, we can let go and nothing's gonna come undone. Now what we need to do here is just make sure this loop is the right size. So I've got my button handy and we want to make sure that obviously it can go through which it can, but we also don't want it to be too large, which this is a little bit too large. So I'm just gonna pull the loop through the knot there to make it a bit smaller, and just so it comes through comfortably without being too tight or too loose. So I think this is a pretty good size. Now from here, we're gonna move onto the macrame board and start making the actual bracelet. So what I'm just gonna do is take the loop that we just created and put that down through one of the slots on a short side here of the macrame board. And then I'm just gonna take the two holding cords and then bring them all the way down to the opposite side of the board and then just bring them through the equivalent slot down there. So we now have our holding cords in place. So we now just need to connect our last cord here. So same principle, we just need to find the midpoint first so put the ends together and then where you keep hold of it, you wanna then take one end underneath the holding cards there and then just place the middle right behind them. And then we just wanna make the exact same knot as we did with the other cord. So take the left length over the holding cards, the right one goes over that underneath everything in the middle and then up through the loop here on the other side. And as you pull it tight, it's forming that knot and then we can just bring it up a bit and pull it nice and tight. And then just make sure to push it all the way up to sit below the other knot. And here we now have both of our lengths attached. And then what we need to do is start making the actual pattern. So I'm going to start with the top lengths. In my case, they're purple. And what we need to do is for one length, so on the left side here, I'm gonna bring that down over the top 
of, in my case, the copper one. And on the other side, we need to bring it underneath, like that, so opposite. So the left side comes over and the right side goes under. And then what we need to do is make another knot like the ones I've showed you, the exact same one. So left length comes over the holding cords, right one goes over that, underneath everything in the middle, and up through the loop. And then we just wanna pull this tight and it's gonna sit right below the other knots that we've made. And then we can just bring these out to the side. Now, we now need to use the new top ones, which in my case are the copper ones. And then what we need to do is again, bring these over and under the other ones that are going out to the side there. And you basically wanna do it in the direction where they're naturally sitting already. So on the left side here, it's wanting to naturally come underneath, in my case, the purple one. So let's just let it do that. And on the right side, it's naturally coming over. So just bring that down over the other length. So in this case here, the copper one comes underneath on the left and over the top on the right. And then we just wanna make that simple knot in the exact same way. And then tighten that all the way up to sit below the previous one. Bring those cords out to the side. And now back to the new top ones, which are purple in my case. And if you remember, the last knot we made with the purple, we brought the left one here over the copper one, which if you look, that's also where it would naturally want to come. And on the right side, it wants to naturally come underneath, which is also what we did last time we used the purple cord. So that is basically what you wanna keep doing. You wanna bring one side over and one side under, but you just wanna make sure that according to the color, you do it in the right order, and then make your knot. Tighten that underneath the other ones. Just lay them out to the side and then you can just let the knots guide you where you need to bring the cords as well. So this one naturally wants to come underneath. So let it do that. And on the right side here, it naturally wants to come over. So we bring them down so we can make our next knot here. Just sit right below the other ones and just make sure you pull them nice and tight. And then go back to the purple, which comes over on the left and under on the right. Make your knot, pull that tight, just like that. And then onto the copper, which comes under on the left and over on the right. So you can see opposite to each other. And that is how we achieve this effect with the colors being kind of blended, but still separated on the edges in that twist going all the way along the bracelet. So you just wanna keep going like this until you have the length that you need. So now that I pretty much have the length that I need, what I just wanna do is secure some of these knots in place as we just make the final few. So I'm gonna get out my glue and then just use a toothpick to apply it with. So just get a little bit on there. It doesn't have to be lowered because whatever excess is just gonna come spilling out. But then the next knot that I'm due to make is with the copper cords here. And that's gonna be the final knot I make with those cords. So before I make that knot, I just wanna take the glue and go in and put a little bit on to the holding cords, just on both sides, just a bit like that. So that when I go in and make the next knot here, just in the exact same way as all the others, but once I tighten this, it's gonna basically be on top of that glue. And when that glue dries, it's gonna really help secure that final knot with this color cord in place. And then I'm just gonna make a knot with the other lengths here, in my case, the purple ones, because I'm gonna use these lengths to then attach my button with. Just make sure to pull that nice and tight. And then now what we need to do is actually add our button as well. So just get that out and then you can just release your holding cords. We then want to get both of them through the loop on the back of the button there and then just push it all the way up. So it's gonna sit right at the end of the bracelet and you can place the holding cords back in your slot there. And then just take the two lengths of cord that are the last ones we just made a knot with, in my case a purple like I said. And then we just wanna use them to make a knot now below that button and then just tighten that all the way up underneath there. Now what we need to do is make another knot, but I'm gonna start with the other side. So in this case, we're actually gonna be making a square knot. So just start with the opposite side to what you've been doing all the way along. Otherwise, do exactly the same thing, and then tighten that. Make sure to pull it nice and tight. And then if I just release that, we can see on the back of the button that's now been trapped in place by a square knot below it. So what we can do now is remove this from the board. Now, of course, we're now left with all these lengths of cord that we wanna get rid of. So to be able to do that, 
what I'm gonna do is bring back in my glue and then add some more on a toothpick. We can just do a bit at a time and always add more as we need it. Now I'm gonna then add the glue on top of that square knot that we made, the very final knot. I mean, it's also a little bit out on the actual holding cards. And I also like to make sure to do it on the other side of the knot to really help secure it in place. So just kind of lift up your button a little bit. And I also like to do the same back with the final knot we made with the other color cards, so in my case the copper ones. Now we added glue basically inside the knot, but I just want to add a little bit on top. Doesn't have to be too much, just a bit. And then also just around where the cards are coming out, just to give it that extra bit of security for when we cut off the excess. Because we want to make sure nothing is going to unravel. And then we just need to leave that to dry before we can cut off the excess there. Now when the glue is just dry enough to the touch, we can go in and cut off the excess of the card. So you just want to cut right close to where the cards are coming out from. Something like that. And of course just do that with all of them. Now what I personally just like to do is just take a little bit more glue and literally just put it on the ends of the card that you just cut off just to kind of seal them in place. And again, just to get it as secure as possible. So if you want to do that, just go around and do that with all of them as well. And when you then let your glue dry completely, you then have your finished bracelet ready to wear. So I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial for this double spiral macrame bracelet. And as you could see, it's a really simple technique. It's just a matter of how you place your cords while you're making your knots. And of course, you can use many different kinds of cords for this and you'll achieve different looks. Now, if you want to see more macrame tutorials, I have loads on my channel. So feel free to check that out. And while you're there, you can also subscribe so you don't miss any future ones. Otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.